we give every glory and adoration, every exaltation. We come before thee this evening to present your truth to the whole world. That mankind may testify in time to come that it wasn't man that did it, that they had no strength of their own, they had no army, they had no weapons. All they had was the gospel of truth and of redemption. And behold, because their hearts and their minds we are clean, because the Almighty found them unblemished. That was why they were blessed, and everything they asked for came to pass. That, that was why this same generation, this very IPOB, shall endure, for flesh cannot be mortalized, but the truth of the Most High, who is timeless, who is ageless, shall prevail. And upon that very promise do we pray this evening. Because your words are yea and amen. People wonder, how come you love David so much? Man couldn't understand that David knew how to ask David Thank you so much for, for anything that he wants. There was a, nothing that David ever asked for that he didn't give to him. That same secret is what we have. That is what we present before thee. To the hearing of the entirety of humanity this very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you are speaking from, that we make this proclamation that your words are yea and amen, because you are God. Anything you say must come to pass. You are not man. Anytime, any word that you utter, documented by the sons of men in the Torah and in the scriptures, must come to pass. Because your spirit, you are not man. Go viral so that you are not mortal. We will not allow them to hijack the story. We will not allow them to tell our story. We will tell it the way it is and the truth. We will never allow them to change the narrative. It doesn't matter what they do. They think by holding down our spring leader, Mazen Nandi Kano, that the message will not longer be spreading. We will continue to spread the message like wildfire. Every message that Mazen Nandi Kano have left behind for us, he has given us everything we need to achieve our victory. Mazen Nandi Kano has given us all the knowledge that we require for us to speak up. And we have to continue to speak up. Continue to say it the way it is. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter the, what they do. They can never stop us. Yes, they will never stop us. They are trying as much as they can, spreading all sorts of lies. But we will continue to break all those lies. Every lie they are spreading, you can see lies. They have even extended their lies internationally. They have involved Kenya. Kenya is now lying that Mazen Nandi Kano wasn't abducted in their land. They are defending it. But recently, an information has been leaked from the United, from the United Kingdom that the passport of our spring leader, Mazen Nandi Kano, was discovered at Kenya. Mazen Nandi Kano passport was discovered at Kenya. How did the passport get to Kenya if he was not abducted in Kenya? And this is a proof that shows that they abducted Mazen Nandi Kano. It wasn't a right. They abducted him. That is why we still have to find his passport in Kenya. No matter what they do, they can never succeed. This has become an international problem. And Nigeria is in soup. They are running helter skelter. And nobody can help them this time around. There is no place to hide. Mazin Nandi Kano is justified in whatever he's doing. Mazin Nandi Kano must be freed unconditionally and in a very short time. In a very short time, Mazin Nandi Kano will be out. He will be here with us again to speak and we will be, continue to hear his voice. And meanwhile, while we are waiting for our school leader, Mazin Nandi Kano, we will continue to preach that message that he has given us. Continue to spread that gospel of peace, that gospel of love, that gospel of freedom that he has given us. We will continue to spread it. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they think. The haters can hate him for all I care. I do not care about what they are hating. All I know is that I am following the truth. Because Mazen Nandi Kano is the truth. He is as white as snow. He's not fighting just for the Igbos. He's not fighting just only for the Biafrans. He's not fighting only for the Duans. He's not fighting only for the Southerners. He's not fighting for only the indigenous people of, of uh, Nigeria. He's fighting for all Africans all over the world that everybody will have freedom and have a decent life and have respect wherever they go. That is what Mazen Nandi Kano is asking for and that is what we are standing for. We are not asking for war. We are not underrating anybody. We are not talking down on anybody and we are not against anybody, any individual. But we are against any evil that is being perpetrated against anybody at any given time. That is what Mazen Nandi Kano stands for and we are speaking along with him. Every forces that are fighting against Mazen Nandi Kano will be crushed. They will be crushed. It doesn't matter how strong they think they are. They will be crushed. 
no matter where they come from, no matter the angle they are coming from, they will be crushed. When we talk about terrorism in that very contrast from Nigeria, have you asked yourself, how did terrorism come about in Nigeria? How did terrorism come to Nigeria? From every indication, when you look at the indigenous people, the original indigenous people of Nigeria, they are very peaceful. It doesn't matter the religion, it doesn't matter the tribe, it doesn't matter the language, it doesn't matter their location. Every indigenous person in that very contraption called Nigeria is a peaceful person. We are all peaceful. Every indigenous tribe, they are all peaceful people, loving people and welcoming people. Not until Usman Damfodio, a Fulani, came into Nigeria. A stranger from nowhere came into Nigeria, went to the Aousa land, and he occupied the Aousa land with lies. The same lie they, they are preaching up to today, when they come, they talk about corruption. That was the same message Usman Damfodio came to Aousa land with. Usman Damfodio came to Aousa land to preach a message of, brought to his fake religion. After bringing the fake religion there, he was preaching corruption, saying that all the Hausa leaders are corrupt. That was the message he brought. He said all the Hausa leaders are corrupt. This was the lie Osman Danfudio brought to the Hausa land. And eventually, the Hausa people bought into that very lie. They bought into that very lie and they sold their leaders out, sold their able men out. Osman Danfudio used the Hausa to conquer themselves with lies. Telling them that he was going to protect them. And he was going to say, this was a man who came as a stranger, as a teacher. In the name of religion. But at the end of the day, what happened? He came only to destroy the people. And today, the houses are no more. They don't have voice anymore. That was the beginning of terrorism in Nigeria. Usman Damfodio brought terrorism in Nigeria. He first of all killed all the leaders of the houses. Unknowingly to the outside, they thought he was fighting for them, not knowing that he was coming to occupy them. Today, what is happening? You no longer hear about the houses. He killed them and took away all the emirs that are originally houses. He took them away and planted Fulanis in every key position. That was what Usman Damfudu did. The beginning of terrorism in Nigeria. And since then, his brothers, Fulanis, who, he, who has invited from all corners, are following his footsteps. He tried to educate his own brothers. During the education, he educated only his own brother and planted them in the key, key purpose. Planted them in the same key foods. His own grandchild, whom they call Amadou Bello. Amadou Bello brought the same hate speech. You remember the video of Amadou Bello that I always play? The video of Amadou Bello I play when they were asking him, what is your problem with an Igbo man? Why are you always antagonizing an Igbo man? What is your problem? What did Amadou Bello say? He said, Igbo man cannot be a slave. That was a simple of interpretation of what he said. That wherever you put an Igbo man, he will always come out to be the leader. He wants to be the leader. Any place you put him, even you put him in labor camp, he will come out to be a leader. That was the annoyance of Amadou Bello, the grandson of uh, Osman Dafudi. And he stood against, preached evil, preached hate against the Igbos. And the hate spread and spread until many people in that country from Nigeria bought into the hate that led into the civil war. Civil war was not just about the coup. The coup was just something that just prompted it up. Now they held on it and then begin to kill all the Igbos that they can reach their hand on. If it was just about the, the coup, that is this coup, they did the counter coup and in the counter coup they killed all Igbo military officers. Why don't you stop there? They didn't stop there. They begin to kill innocent citizens everywhere. That was the genesis of what you are seeing in Nigeria today. Terrorism in Nigeria was brought the Fulani Janjaweed. They brought it into Nigeria. They brought it into Nigeria, the Fulani Janjaweed. That is why we cannot be able to be in the same place with them. If they don't want to stay with them, it's up to them. They can form their caliphate over there. But for the South, we are not interested in these terrorist people, ter ter terrorizing people. We are not interested in their terrorist activities, in their terrorist life. You can see the way they have made it all. They have willfully handed the north over to the terrorists. Muhammad Buhari that came into power now is a terrorist. He's a terrorist. An open one. An unapologetical terrorist. He spoke up for Boko Haram so many times. Boko Haram appointed him as a spokesman very so many times. 
And Mieti Allah that you know that is another terrorist group, the fourth terrorist group in the world. Mieti Allah. Muhammad Buhari is a patron there. So what are you now still waiting for? And you are there sitting, talking of a better Nigeria. Better Nigeria from where? How? From which angle? From which angle? Thank God for Mazen Nandekano who has woken us all up. If you are still sleeping, continue to sleep. Continue to sleep. Just keep on sleeping if you are still sleeping. But a lot of people are awake and are in alert. That's why we have Mazen Nandekano and Sunday Boo. And they will never take an inch in our land in the south. They will never. It doesn't matter how they try. They will never succeed this time because we are all awake. Our eyes are open. We can never forget the wonderful message of Mazin and the Khan. And before I go, let us play the message of Mazin and the Khan. The revelations Mazin and the Khan made and what he told us. Let us listen to that broadcast once again so that we will never forget. We will never forget that message. Let it continue to ring into your ear. They can never deceive us. We know them. They brought the terrorists. They should take care of it. And they should keep it in their own zone. Don't bring it to the south. That's what they're asking. Let us listen to Mazin and the Khan once again. The crimes you have in the north, the insecurity you have in the north is as a direct consequence of their own action. They groomed them. Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, Al ISIS in West Africa, Boko Haram, Fulani headsmen, bandits, all of them. Who brought them to Nigeria? Is Fulani? Fulani brought them into Nigeria. El Rufai brought them in. Bauchi State Governor brought them in. Are you people deaf and dumb and stupid? When you come out and you pretend, oh, we are one, one Nigeria, go and show me. Somebody was asking, where is the boundary? Uh, where will the boundary of uh, Biafra begin? And I asked the fool, where, where, where did the boundary of Nigeria begin? People from Niger come in and go as they like. Most of these idiots are from Niger. They are building a pipeline to Niger. They are building a railway line to Niger. They are building roads to Niger. We are asked where the money comes from, which is Biafra land. We don't have those infrastructure. No, we don't. But you're taking our money. You come to Izombe. You come to Ohaji. You come to Ebema. You come to, to, to Aguleri. You come to uh, Eboni. You take our resources, sell it, get the money, and now you're building the way to Niger Republic. And you want me to be happy with you. Clap for you all. Nigeria is doing well. One Nigeria. I think you, 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 maybe not again. you are insane. You come to my land, you take our oil, you take our gas, you take our manpower, you take everything, our VAT, our tax that we pay. You are now building a road from Katsina to Niger. Airport in Niger. Refinery in Niger. You take oil, you crude oil from my land, you take it to Niger, you refine it, you bring it back to me as a refined petroleum. Or as PPS as you call it. And you're telling me that that country is viable. You're telling me that Nigeria should be supported. We are in one Nigeria. We are not going anywhere. And you're dying every day. Because those that they appointed to speak for you, they gave them money and positions. So that they will come out on the pages of newspapers to give the world the misleading impression that everything is okay when things are not okay. Go through the statements of Ohaneze and see the contradictions in it. Nigeria is not working. We are marginalized. And then you come back and say, Nigeria is one. We must stay in it together. Are you not foolish? These are the useless intellectuals that you have. On one hand, you say Nigeria is not working. You are marginalized. You are being discriminated against. You are suffering. They are killing you everywhere. And you come back to the same place and say, Nigeria must be one. Had Nigerians gotten together to say they want to be part of this useless contraption, that's entirely their business. I mean, Democrats have subscribed to it. But have you asked yourself this question? Why is it that all those asking you to remain in one Nigeria has something to gain from Nigeria, or they have benefited in the past? Nothing more, nothing less. I saw the letter that Atika Baka wrote to, to President Biden. In it, Atika Baka said to come, come and help us fight terrorism, in order to ensure that there will be no regional destabilization. That is their game plan at the U.S. State Department for very many years, until we stepped in. They keep throwing out these lies. Once Nigeria breaks up, there will be destabilization in the entire region. I said that because you don't understand African history. Most of these people are not educated. When I say, they say I'm insulting them. No, I'm not insulting you. Most of you are not educated. In Africa, we are tribal creatures in Africa. In Africa, we are tribal creatures in Africa. We always go back to our village where we are born, where our umbilical cord, our long, where it was buried.
That's where we come from. That is why every Christmas, Easter, um, New Year festival, or uh, August meeting, you see us migrating back to where we come from. And I keep saying these things to Africans, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. Everywhere in Africa during Christmas, if you like, be in South Africa, if you like, let it be in Kenya, you let it be in Rwanda, everybody from the capital goes to the village. If you go to Accra, the same thing happens. This past Christmas, if you like, go to Kotonou, go to Yaoundé in Cameroon. Everybody living in the capital cities of Africa, they go back to their villages. They go back to their tribes where they come from. Do they do that in the, in the Western world? During Christmas, these people migrating from, oh, I come from Florida, I'm going to Florida. No, you don't. Because people come from where they are born. We come from where our ancestors were born. That is the difference between black people in Africa and those from Europe and other parts of the world. We come from, so if you ask somebody, where do you come from? He or she will mention their village. That is what makes us Africans. It's very, very unique. If you destroy that, you are finished as a people. In Africa, we are tribal. First and foremost, we belong to our tribe where we come from. That is why our people need to appreciate this. Very, very critical. That Africa is restructured to recognize where people come from. All these artificial creations by Europeans, Nigeria, this, that, all that rubbish. That is why you can never ever make any progress for the next six billion years. You can never ever make any progress in the zoo. Why is it, if we are not tribal, why would the whole presidency come out, Fulani presidency come out and say, we are defending Fulani headsmen? A presidency of the whole of Nigeria, so to speak. It is because by instinct, we are tribal beings in Africa. That is why Nigeria is unsustainable. That is why the man from Ishekiri has to vote to say, this is where I want to belong to. That is why referendum is the only way forward. That is why Africa is poor. Africans must recognize that this is who we are. You cannot live in Lagos if you are an Igbo man during Christmas. It's, not to it's impossible. You must go to Iboland. You must. That's where you come from. And if they ask you, oh, but you were born in Lagos, you will say, no, that's where my parents come from. They ask your parents, your parents will say, that's where my parents come from. They will keep going back until they get uh, uh, to the, perhaps the, the hundredth generation. That's who we are. And nobody can change it. We are not born on the streets. Some people were born uh, 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 along um, uh, Ijora or Kota Highway in Lagos. Maybe they are from Urobo. You ask them, where are you from? They say, I'm from Urobo. But I was born in, but this is where I come from. That is who we are. That is why all these useless, idiotic countries created in Africa cannot survive. It can never ever survive. And how do we stop it? Only a revolution can stop it. Only a revolution. If you like, keep postponing it. If you like, keep putting it off forever and ever. Only a revolution can solve this very problem because under a revolution, the powers that be, those that have been making your life a misery, will be overthrown. Nobody will say it's a coup anymore. It is called popular uprising. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. And that is why today some soldiers are listening and they are resigning from the army. How can you be a soldier in the Nigerian army? And your village is being occupied by full army headsmen. Imagine those from, uh, uh, those from Oyo or Ondo serving in the Nigerian army. These are Yoruba, my Yoruba brothers who are serving in the Nigerian army. You are from Yoruba, you are serving in the Nigerian army, doing one Nigeria. But your village is being occupied by a Fulani. The same people you are serving, or you claim you are serving, your village, your village, is under occupation by them. And to make matters worse, those you are serving under their flag, one Nigeria and the Arabic inscription, or should I say the motto of uh, Ottoman Danfodio, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. You don't know that the Nigerian emblem, the army emblem of Nigeria, is the motto of Ottoman and Fodio that he used to conquer Hausa people. You don't know that it is there. That's what they're using. You are fighting under the banner of your conquerors. Maybe in Sambisa Forest. And now they are sending their advanced strike force into your village. And you're doing one Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian soldier. I'm a Nigerian army. That is why I commend the 127 soldiers that have resigned so far from the army. 
If you don't do these things I'm asking you to do, you will. Uh, when the time comes, as I'm telling them now, remember 2015, remember 2014, remember 2013, I told you all these things. I told you what was going to happen, and now they have all happened before your eyes. You've seen it. I'm warning you now. If you're serving in the Nigerian army, and you think you're loyal to Buratai, you think I'm serving my, my Nigeria is not a, a fatherland or motherland to anybody. Nigeria is not a motherland or fatherland to anybody. Nigeria is purely a British creation. A British creation. Because if Nigeria was to be a nation or country, there is no way those that call themselves the presidency Asarok can come out to support illegality in Ondo State. Because they know they are doing it for that. Why do you think they want to avenge and revenge for Salma Dubelo? Why? They knew that Ahmadu Bello and, and his, um, his, um, his people, so to speak, were fighting for them. They understood that. At the time, the house of people thought that the family was fighting for them, but today it's very clear. Are, are you, are you, um, I asked you a simple question when I began. Are you hearing house of Fulani anymore? No, it's only Fulani, 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 ever, because they have taken over the entire corner. Of. That is one thing you need to understand. People must begin to appreciate this. If you are in the Nigerian army and you are serving the Nigerian army, you are only paving the way for the conquest of your village, the rape of your daughters and the abduction of your mothers. I'm telling you this. You are in the Nigerian army, yes. But what the Fulanis have got in store for you is to overwhelm and to conquer you. I feel sorry for those of you who are so foolish that they cannot reason very well. After hearing the message of Martin and the Khan, I believe if you're sleepy, you must be awake. If you think it's all over, it is not all over. They have come. Not they will come. They have come. But they will never succeed because we are allowed waiting for them. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra will come. Mechuko Kukabiyama continue to protect Mazin and Kano. Mechuko Kukabiyama continue to protect Sondi Bowo. Mechuko Kukabiyama continue to strengthen Mazin and Kano. Give him more strength to stand for us and speak up for us wherever he is. I trust him so much. He will never betray us. He will never. He has never. It is only us that will betray him. Let us continue to start with Mazin and Kano. Continue to pray for him every night and again. Let us begin to ask for his freedom. Free Mazin and Kano unconditionally. He is going to be free very, very soon. Shuku Kukabiyama has spoken, so shall it be. We will all be free. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are watching from. If you have not subscribed, subscribe and share this video to everybody. That is your own part to play. You have to share the video to every platform where you belong. Let it reach out to people. That is your own part. If you cannot use your own platform to speak, share the video when we make the video. It will help a lot. Thank you for watching and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video. Thank you.